Of the 25 years I've worked with young people and 10 years as a mentor in the public high schools, of the stories shared among the youth, one that stands above them all is the story of a young man who fought in the American Revolution. His name, Peter Francisco, and this is his story. Our story begins in the Azores in June 1760 when Peter Francisco was born. When Peter was five, he was kidnapped by pirates and brought to the American colonies. The ship that carried Peter mysteriously came up the James River and dropped him off on a dock in City Point, Virginia, known as Hopewell today. Peter eventually came into the care of Judge Anthony Winston of Buckingham County, Virginia as an indentured servant. As Peter grew, he became known for his strength and took up the trade of a blacksmith. Winston was also the uncle of a famous patriot, Patrick Henry. In 1775, Judge Winston and Peter rode to Richmond to hear Patrick Henry's famous speech at St. John's Church, Give me liberty or give me death. Henry's speech of liberty echoed throughout the room. Peter was encouraged from the speech to join the Continentals in their fight for independence. Even though Peter was already six foot six inches tall and 260 pounds, Winston felt he was not old enough to enlist. By December 1776, Winston released him to join. Peter's first engagement in the war was the Battle of Brandywine, in which he was wounded in the leg. While in the hospital, he was recovering with another war hero, Marquis de Lafayette. Peter and Lafayette became friends, which their friendship endured for years to come. After the war, when Lafayette returned to America, Lafayette requested Peter to join him in his visit. During Valley Forge, Peter was listed among the sick but recovered. In the Battle of Camden, the Americans were defeated by the British. Peter's commander, Colonel Mayo, was captured and taken behind enemy lines. Peter grabbed a horse and ran behind the lines and rescued Mayo. Before leaving the field, Peter saw a cannon that was left behind and badly needed for the cause. Peter grabbed the 1,100-pound cannon and carried it to safety. The United States Post Office issued a commemorative stamp featuring Peter accomplishing this feat. Because of his size and strength, Peter considered regular swords as toothpicks. General George Washington, hearing of this, ordered a sword that had a five-foot blade made for Peter. On March 13, 1781, the sword was delivered to him. Two days later, he would use it at Guilford Courthouse. It was considered one of the bloodiest battles of the war. On March 15, 1781, Peter Francisco fought and killed 11 British soldiers. It was here that Peter suffered a severe leg wound and was left for dead. Later, a man of the Quaker faith found him and nursed him back to health. A monument of this feat stands in Greensboro, North Carolina on the battlefield where this event took place. The inscription reads, To Peter Francisco, a giant in stature, might, and courage, who slew in this engagement 11 of the enemy with his own broad sword, rendering himself thereby perhaps the most famous private soldier of the Revolutionary War. While the British were spreading havoc and desolation in Virginia, Peter, who was 21 years of age, had been recovering from his wounds received at the Battle of Guilford. While traveling, Peter stopped by the house of a Mr. Ben Ward, who lived in what is now called Nottoway County. Nine of Tarleton's cavalry had approached Peter and told him he was to be their prisoner. Seeing he was overpowered by the numbers, he made no resistance. Believing him to be very peaceable, they all went into the house, leaving him and the paymaster together. 
Give up instantly all that you possess of value or prepare to die. Peter said, I have nothing to give up, so use your pleasure. Deliver instantly those massy silver buckles which you wear in your shoes. Peter replied, They were a present from a valued friend, and it would grieve me to part with them. Give them into your hand, I never will. You have the power, take them, if you think fit. As the soldier was focusing on the silver buckles, Francisco, finding so favorable an opportunity, overcame the soldier and regained his freedom. Later recorded by Peter, he reflected on the following events that took place. Ben Ward, the man of the house, very ungenerously brought out a musket and gave it to one of the British soldiers and told him, Here, make use of that. The soldier mounted the only horse they could get and presented it at my breast. It misfired. I disarmed and wounded him. Tarleton's troops of 400 men were in sight. All was a hurry and confusion, which I increased by repeatedly howling as loud as I could. Come on, my brave boys. Now is your time. We will soon dispatch of these few and attack the main body. The wounded man flew to the troop. The others were panic-struck and fled. I seized wards and would have dispatched of him, but the poor wretch begged for his life. Discovering Tarleton had dispatched ten more in pursuit of me, I made off. I evaded their vigilance. They stopped to refresh themselves. I went the next day to wards for my horses. He demanded two for his trouble and generous intentions. Finding my situation dangerous, I went off with my six horses. I intended to avenge myself of wards at a future day, but Providence ordained that I should not be his executioner, for he broke his neck from a fall from one of the very horses. Peter was present at Yorktown when the British surrendered. After the war, people commented on Peter's role in the fight for independence. Without him, we would have lost two crucial battles, perhaps the war, and with it our freedom. He was truly a one-man army. Peter married three times and was twice widowed and had five children. Throughout the remainder of his life, Peter was considered one of the greatest men of his time. Sadly, his exploits were forgotten. One of the purposes of this film is to provide true heroes at a time when our generation needs them. Here in Shaco Cemetery, Richmond, Virginia, we pay our last respects to the great American revolutionary hero, Peter Francisco, who died January 16, 1831. Peter Francisco believed in the God of the Bible, and his life was marked with godly traits such as humility, forgiveness, bravery, meekness, and many others. Peter's life was an example of true Christian character.